everybody. Uh, hello, Nasty, right? Uh, 25th anniversary, uh, the Beastie Boys, 1997, the fifth album, uh, the fifth studio album in their catalog, 25th anniversary. Like we say all the time when these anniversaries come out, I can't believe it's been that long, but it has. And the Beastie Boys are amazing to me because of their longevity, their versatility, their talent, and they've had an album literally like in every stage of my life, you know, from elementary school, their big debut, you know, their second landmark but not so successful album when I was in junior high school, and then they had two huge albums in when I was in high school, you know, um, and Hello Nasty came out in, in my 20s when I was in college and we all couldn't believe that like wow the Beastie Boys are back again but anyways it all started with this one right here uh, License to Ill you know nobody really gave a that these guys were white guys trying to rap it just mattered that these beats were aggressive the rhymes were funny the voices or something you never heard in hip-hop regardless of the color you know you got this raspy voice coming in this whiny childlike punky voice and then this nasally guy coming in and they're all just kind of going back and forth you know uh, reminiscent of the people they were influenced by you know like the Treacherous Three, or, you know, Funky Four Plus One More, or Stetsa Sonic, you know, all these groups that had multiple MCs rhyming back and forth. I mean, just really cool. And it had never been done in this way by a couple of crazy white boys. So, yeah, here's License to Ill. Um, this is a reissue. I do have an original that's all beat to hell. Uh, here's a, a Walmart copy. Uh exclusive limited edition exclusive color clear vinyl uh, Walmart copy in the shrink uh, hit me up if you want to buy that one <laughs> I'm kidding I'm not selling anything on here sorry anyhow license to ill really cool album uh, I was uh, like I said a, a little kid and it just it blew my mind I was like what music is this it sounds cool it sounds funny I didn't know what any of it meant you know I didn't know what it meant to you know ditch school and smoke grass and sniff glue but anyways I was learning all the lyrics <laughs> and eventually I learned what that was all about but uh, I mean it was catchy it was popular I mean everybody owned this album my first copy was from uh, the where it was on cassette I wish I had that cassette is a cassette that I bought at the warehouse all right does anyone remember the warehouse if you do please leave a comment <laughs> anyhow that was the first time you know uh, as a kid with my allowance money I went into a store and bought you know a piece of music it was well, I don't know fourth fifth grade I guess anyhow the BC Boys uh, second album was uh, was this guy right here Paul's Boutique uh, Paul's Boutique of course was not as popular as the as license to ill and the studio uh, the record company pretty much um, you know left it alone and stopped promoting it and the, the album went nowhere but you know long story short I won't get it maybe I'll do a whole video on Paul's boutique but this is one of the greatest hip-hop albums ever made and if you don't think so leave a comment and we'll argue till the end of time all right uh, the production on this it's coming from 1989, 1990, around that era. The production on this is insane. Okay, I think there's about 2 million samples on this. <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating. It's, it's probably a quarter of that or maybe even half of that. There's so much sampling done here. The Beasties ended up working with the Dust Brothers on this album and it's extraordinary all right the back and forth between the three is even more amazing and more impressive on that album the big singles were shake your rump 
and Hey Ladies, but that was it. You know, that album went nowhere, and I think a lot of people were disappointed. And then the Beasties came back since that album. So, you know, since that album didn't do what everyone thought it was going to do, the Beasties thought they were free to do whatever the hell they wanted. And they got back to their roots uh, with this album. The Beasties uh, became a band again, you know. That's how they started. I mean, the Beasties were a punk rock band. Here is a record store day release from a couple of years ago from their album Aglio e Olio, um, Garlic and Oil. And it's just, it's all their old punk rock stuff. And uh, this is, you know, not the original, of course. It was a record store day release that I picked up. And here's um, the in sound uh, from Way Out. Uh, this, this is all instrumentals by the Beasties. Instrumental music composed and performed by the Beastie Boys. This is like a mixture of jazz, samba, bossa nova, funk, hip hop. Uh, Eric Bobo is on this album. This is a really cool copy. It's a limited edition gold. And it's a limited edition number 1665 out of uh, 5,000. Really cool there. Can you see that? Well, I'll get a better shot of that. Anyways, the Beasties, you know, multi-talented, you know, multi-instrumentalists. All right. Uh, the only album I don't have here is Ill Communication. All right. I had that on cassette too. <laughs> Damn, I wish I had my cassettes. Uh, I don't have that vinyl. Ill Communication featured uh, the hit Sabotage, which was something out of this world uh, for the Beasties and everybody else. And what, what kind of song is, is Sabotage? I mean, it's it, it's everything. It's rock, it's punk, it's hip-hop, it's kind of thrash. It's a pretty, pretty amazing freaking song. So what do the Beasties do after all this? In 1997, they come up with a new album. They drop a new single called Intergalactic. I remember hearing that on K-Rock, you know, it wasn't even like, I didn't hear it on a hip-hop station, and we were all like, what the hell is this, man? This sounds amazing. Wow, the BC Boys are back. I can't believe it. And here I am uh, doing an unboxing, all right, guys? This is my first unboxing here on the channel. Thank you for joining me in this unboxing. Uh, I've never done one of these before, so I'll try not to make it boring. I guess when you unbox stuff on here, you gotta kind of review the packaging, you know? Uh, so far, so good. You know, no, no, um, Deans, no, um... Oh, let me say this. I ordered this on BeastieBoys.com. Uh, there's a bunch still available. They ship August, or excuse me, October 1st. Uh, here's my copy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a box inside of another box with some crumpled paper here. Okay, here's the other box. Now let me open that. <laughs> and let me uh, do some editing here. Okay, so it's one of these like, you know, whiplash boxes. Really cool. Nice and packed, nice and tight, you know, with some extra padding here, All right? Overall, I mean, I'm happy with uh, the packaging because the product is all right. It's A-OK. -okay. It's perfect. And here it is, guys. The 25th Deluxe Super Box Set of Hello Nasty. Here, let me just read this off, huh? Beastie Boys Hello Nasty 25th Anniversary Limited Edition Deluxe 4 LP reissue on 180 gram vinyl featuring 21 bonus tracks including remixes, b-sides, and rarities. I mean, the original uh, cover was yellow with the, the Beasties inside of like a tin can. And uh, here, you can't see it on here. And I'm not going to do the whole unwrapping here. What I'm going to do is show you a, a video 
of the opened product. But uh, yeah, you can see kind of like a embossed uh, image of their original cover on here, all in all in white, and the back is all in white. There's nothing here made uh, in Italy. Okay. Um, so like I said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here, guys. Thank you so much. Here is a video of uh, of this. So you could see it. It's a 4 LP uh, edition. It has a uh, kind of like a, a quadruple gatefold or something like that. Why am I still talking? <laughs> Thank you for joining me, guys. Hit that subscription button and uh, enjoy uh, this little video.